Hi folks, and welcome to Open Analysis Live, we're back. So if you guys didn't catch our last video, we started analyzing Warzone Rat. And what we did was we marked up an IDB with a bunch of structures so that we could understand the code. And in this video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at those structures, looking at the marked up code, and trying to extract the configuration file from Warzone. So if you haven't watched the last video, go back and check that out because we're kind of starting right in the middle of the analysis in this one. So with that, we're just gonna jump into it. So here we have our IDB that we'd marked up and this is pretty much where we left off. So we had a bunch of the functions named and we had some structs defined. Now, what we wanna do is want to identify where the configuration file is stored. And in the last video, we identified that they were copying some data out of the BSS section uh, of the PE file. And we even took a look at the BSS section here and we could see that it looked like there was some encrypted data there. In the business, we call this foreshadowing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our code here and we're going to see how they decrypt that data and how they interpret it as a configuration file. Now, this is kind of complex because this is C++ code and so there are multiple nested structures. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on the function that analyzes the BSS section and extracts the config and we're going to ignore some of the other stuff that comes before it uh, just for the sake of simplicity in the video. However, if you guys recall in the last video, I did include an IDC file, a link to it on GitHub, where you guys can download the file and run it in IDA and it will mark up your IDB so you can see exactly what I'm seeing here on the screen. So that way, if you wanna investigate some of the other components here in the binary, um, go ahead, feel free. I've marked up quite a few structures and quite a few functions, so it'll make it a little bit easier to read and interpret what's going on. So with that being said, Let's take a look here. So here we see the BSS string, that's the name of the section, which they're trying to find from the PE file. They pass that string into this function here, which uh, basically iterates through the PE section header and looks at each section name and tries to identify the BSS section. And once it finds the BSS section, it copies the P header struct for that section. So the section struct into, into memory, into this uh, struct here, and they pass it back to the code here. So that's what we have right here called section data. In this function here, which is basically just a copy function, but it allows you to pass a struct to copy data into, they pass the section address from the PE header, the section header for the BSS section. So what this is telling them is where in memory is that section located? And then it's a simple copy where they actually just copy out that BSS section data. Now to make that a little bit more clear, what I can do is I can pull up the uh, Korkami PE format diagram, my favorite for explaining how PE headers are structured. And we can take a look here at the section table and we can see the section table is obviously just a bunch of binary data, um, but it's arranged in this format here where you have the section name, the virtual size virtual address. So this is where the section is located in memory. And then the uh, raw size and the pointer to the raw data, which is where it's located in the file on disk. So what Warzone did was it first located the section based on the name here, so .bss then it grabbed the virtual address of the BSS section. So this is where it's located in memory. And then they copied it out into a struct. So that's what we have here, this data from the BSS section. So now what we wanna do is wanna look at this decrypt config function. So in the decrypt config function, there's more pointer math where they're basically uh, finding pieces of data in these structures, but it's an imposed structure on top of the BSS data. So this is where it becomes important because this isn't a previously defined structure. This is unique to Warzone. So we'll take a closer look at how this works here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to look at this copy from offset, which is basically just able to copy some data from an offset in a data stream. So they're just basically find the offset and copy a certain amount of bytes. Now, why this is important is because what they're passing into it is the data from BSS. 
And they pass in, if we look at the arguments here, so you can see the first argument is the address where they want to copy the data from. Second argument is the, a buffer where that's going to contain the output. Next argument is the offset into that data buffer, so where they want to start copying from. And the next thing is the size. So if we look at these arguments here, we have the first thing in is the BSS data pointer. So that's a pointer to where the BSS section starts in memory. So the next argument is where they're going to store the data that they copy. So we don't have to worry about that too much, except just to note that it is actually a structure. And I marked this up in the last video. And the structure is just simply two elements. They have the size and then they have the actual buffer uh, that has the data in it. So it's very simple data structure. Next argument is the offset, and this is where it gets interesting. So the offset is actually a D word, and the D word comes from the actual BSS data buffer. So you might be saying, well, that's kind of interesting. Uh, what does that mean? So if we look at the buffer here, and I think I'd already kind of hinted at this in the last video, the first, I'll undo this. The first D word in that buffer is actually a length. So if we turn it into a D word, it's 32 hex. And where they're copying the data from is at 32 hex plus four. So that would mean 32 hex in plus four, four bytes is this D word. So it looks like they're copying data from 36 hex and that's gonna be a data section. Now, looking at this and having looked at a lot of malware, immediately I'm thinking, well, what's in that first 32 hex bytes? Probably the key, right? They probably have a key and encrypted data uh, all sandwiched together in that buffer. And this struct is now indicating how much of the buffer is the key and how much is the data. Now, this actually ends up being how Warzone works. And like I mentioned uh, in the last video, I did do some analysis, so I know that's how it works. But even without knowing that, I would immediately think like, all right, so there's probably two pieces of data in this buffer and we wanna take a look at both of them and see what they are. So that's the first piece to the puzzle here of how the BSS section is structured and how to get the config out of it. So we know the first D word is actually a length and it's a length to some amount of data. And then after that data is another piece of data. So there's two and the first date piece of data, the length of it is the first four bytes uh, D word in that buffer. So once they copy that out into temp data, they do another copy. And this one is interesting as well. I've called it copy key data because I already analyzed this. <laughs> but basically what they do is they copy out the first data block, the one that's length is determined by that first four bytes. So they copy out the two pieces of data, the first thing that has the length and the second thing, which is just everything else in the buffer after that first piece of data. And then they send it to this function. Now, uh, I have helpfully labeled these pieces of data as key and data. And even if I didn't know this was going to be some decryption, you can kind of guess. Uh, you just look at the data, you can see that it's obviously encrypted or obfuscated somehow. And if they're passing two pieces of it into a function, which is going to result in a config, you can kind of guess it's probably going to be some sort of decryption. So we already have uh, a pretty good idea of what's going on here. And if we pop into the function, here's where we get to rely on some of our pre previous videos where we talked about encryption. So we had a video out talking about RC4 encryption. And the key takeaway from that video was anytime you see an array being initialized up to 256 bytes, and it's being initialized with its identity value. So by that, what I mean is you have an array and the values in the array match up to the position in which they're located in the array. So zero position has a zero in it. One position has a one in it. Anytime you see something like this and encryption, always a good indication that they're setting up the key stream for RC4 encryption. And the easiest way to test this is instead of trying to analyze the algorithm, which you know you can do, it's not, it's not too difficult, but because RC4 is very forgiving in the way that it's set up and because it only has a key and a data value that has to be sent to it, it's always easier just to test it. Just grab the two pieces of data, pass it to an RC4 algorithm, see whether it works. So that's what we're gonna do now and we're gonna determine whether this is RC4 or not. 
So the first thing we need to do is grab this data. So let's pop into the BSS section here. We know that the first piece of data is gonna be 32 bytes. So that means 32 starting at four is 36, just like we mentioned before. So we'll grab the first up to 36, right click, copy hex. If you want the copy hex plugin for IDA, I'll link it below. It's on my GitHub. It's for 2.7, but I'll probably update it for Python 3 soon. So we have those hex bytes copied. And now I can show you uh, one of my favorite tools here, Cyberchef. Paste those hex bytes in here from hex, RC4. Oh, I think actually this is, uh, this is gonna be the key, I think. So we'll pass that in here. And then we have to grab the second, the rest of the buffer. So from 36 bytes, 37, all the way down to the bottom of the buffer. Right click, copy hex, pop back in Cyberchef, paste this in here, and it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Probably grabbed too many bytes. B5. Nice, okay. So what you saw there was, uh, was an off by one error and I often make this mistake. So don't fall victim to this. It's 36 bytes, but starting from zero. So I should have grabbed 35 and zero X 36 is the beginning of the next piece of data. So my bad, it happens. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna take a look at this output here. We can see it looks like there's some strings in there, some numbers, but it's hard to see what's going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the output to a hex dump. Then we can see the output here is hex dump, and we can see that there's actually some ASCII characters in here spaced out by null bytes. And if you remember in some of our older videos, when we talked about Unicode or wide strings versus ASCII strings, what you want to remember is Unicode or wide strings are actually two bytes long instead of a single byte. And if they're the ASCII character set in wide, what it is is there's a null byte in between each one of the ASCII bytes. So if we were to look here at, these, at this string, you see one null byte, six, null byte, five, null byte. So it looks like this data, this decrypted data contain, contains some Unicode strings. So what we could do is we copy this data out and then we could transform it into an ASCII string so we can see uh, what's actually being displayed here. Now, uh, there's also some other data in here and we're gonna investigate that in a minute. I'm gonna show you how I decoded it myself and some tricks that I use while figuring out what the structure or the format was here. But before we do that, I think it's safe to say that we've confirmed the decryption algorithm is indeed RC4. So that does look like a valid output. It would be too much of a coincidence if you used RC4 decryption with those two data structures, those two data blobs, and you got uh, something that looked kind of well formatted like that, like uh, wide strings. So I think that we can now safely say that in Warzone, the configuration is stored in the BSS section. The first four bytes are a D word that indicate how long the key is then after the key is the encrypted configuration data. So you can use that D word to determine the key length, copy the key out, everything after the key is the encrypted data. If you hear some noises, it's just the doggo in the background. He's, uh, he's liking the sunbeams here, I'll show you guys. The joys of having a dog. Um, anyway, for the rest of the video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna focus on using Python to build a static config extractor so that we can then extract that config from every Warzone file and we don't have to open an IDA anymore. So with that, let's close up IDA. We'll pop over into our Python shell and uh, get started on actually writing this config extractor. All right, so to get started with writing our config extractor here, what I've done is I've opened a JupyterLab notebook. And if you guys aren't familiar with this, this is basically just an interface that you can use to basically develop Python scripts while also annotating them and adding some extra features. So this is a new thing. I actually saw Geohot doing this a while ago, uh, George from Comma AI. Yo, it's Geohot. 
he was streaming one of these things and I thought this is a good way to sort of organize my thoughts when I'm trying to explain code to you as opposed to just having like a command line window and typing a bunch of garbage into it. So what I've done is I've set this up. I think I'll do another quick tutorial video just on how I had it set up and I'll drop that soon so that you guys can uh, set up your own version of this if you want. The way that I have it set up is basically when I save a notebook here, it saves it to uh, the OA Labs GitHub and we have this repository here called Lab Notes and in here is where I'll be keeping those uh, Jupyter notebooks. So you can actually view them online in the browser if you want uh, on GitHub, or you can actually download it and run the Jupyter Notebook yourself so you can actually copy paste the code out and edit it however you want. So again, I'll make another quick tutorial, you know, five minutes on how to set this up. I won't go over that now, but if you're interested, just look out for that coming pretty soon. So before we get started writing the actual extractor, there's a few things to go over here. So the first thing is I made a few notes here just to remind myself that this config is stored in the BSS section of the PE file and that the format is the key length, key, and data. I also have some imports here. Whenever you open a saved notebook, you can just do run, run all cells, and then that'll import all this code here so it's ready to be run. I also included a few notes on RC4 encryption and a Python implementation of RC4. This is the same implementation I've been using for years. I just updated it for Python 3. And again, it's on our GitHub, so you can grab it there if you want. I also have a quick helper functions here, which I'll explain in a minute. But basically, all this is is just a quick way to decode hex encoded strings and a way to extract Unicode strings out of data. So with that, that takes us up to writing the actual config extractor. The first thing we want to do is we want to actually get the war zone binary so we can work with it. And I've just used, this is actually a keyword that is unique to the Jupyter Notebook. So if you're writing this standalone, you'd have to do something like pass the path to the binary on the command line. In this case, I'm just using the input function here and we can press shift enter. And now we can enter the path to the war zone binary that we're analyzing. So for me, it's in my temp directory work warzone.bin and now that's stored as a warzone file so to get that data I can do data equals open warzone path as a binary so I'll read binary and I'll read it warzone file <laughs> whoops okay so now we have the data and if we just wanted to check that we could do something like print data we'll just print the first uh, few bytes of it here 10 bytes. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, so there we can see it's like the MZ from the PE file, so we know we actually have the data. So we'll be working in this space here. The first thing we want to do is we want to get that BSS section. So uh, we're going to have to do an import of PE file. And let's iterate through the sections until we find .bss and load that as our data to begin our config extraction with. So to do that, we would do something like pe equals pe file dot pe data equals data. So we'll import that in and then we'll do 4s in pe dot sections if s dot name equals dot bss. And then we will say, oh yeah, well let's, uh, First, create our placeholder for the section data. All right, let's say C, all right. And actually we'll just initialize it to none. And then if it is equal to .bss, we will grab that data. So we'll do section, section data equals s.getData. And I think that it will work. So let's just print this out. Print section data, and we'll just print the first 10 bytes of it. All right, that didn't work. Oh, I think it's because it's binary string when really we want a string. Anyway, we'll give that a shot and see. Oh, I see it has this trailing null bytes. Okay, so uh, it doesn't actually, this is interesting. So the P section name size is actually uh, padded with these null bytes. So we could either say it's e equal to this exact padded section name, or we could just be lazy and we could say if is in s dot name. Okay, so this way it'll match any section that has .bss in the name. So, you know, it's a little bit sloppier, but then we don't have to worry about, you know, matching exactly with the null bytes. Or we could match it exactly with the null bytes like this if we wanted to. So we could revert this and we could say instead like that 
and see if this works. Works perfectly. Okay, so we don't have to print this out anymore and we'll get rid of this testing statement here. So now in the section data, it is the format of size, the word, key, and data. So what we wanna do is we want to import struct and we'll turn that first four bytes into a D word. So we can use struct to unpack that data into a D word, which we can then interpret as an integer. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to do key size equals struct dot unpack. And we are going to use the little endian D word and the data is going to be section data, the first four bytes. And we wanna grab so the reason why I throw that zero on the end there is because when you unpack, uh, you can unpack as an, it unpacks into an array of the number of iterations of that type size. So we are only unpacking one type, which is the D word key size. So we're just gonna unpack the first zero and we can actually print this out key size just to make sure we're on the right track. 50, 50 is 32 hex, is it not? So let's print out hex, 32 hex, perfect. Okay, so now we have the key size. Next thing we want to do is we want to pull out the key and the data. So let's do key equals section data, data of, we'll start at four bytes. So that starts after the D word. The key starts right after the D word, so four bytes. And then the end of it is gonna be four plus the key size. Cause of course we have to add the four bytes on. So, all right, so that's the key and the cipher text is going to be the section data, data all the way from the end of the key. So that's gonna be four plus key size. So that's the end of the key to the end of the data blob that we have. Now I'm gonna show you something interesting here, which I did automatically when I copied these bytes out, but we're gonna to have to do specifically in the program here because it doesn't know where to stop. So if we look at that section here, the SS section, I copied only until the beginning of the null bytes. So I didn't copy any null bytes because I assume that you know there's no configuration in the null bytes. Obviously the BSS section continues and these are all null bytes. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to strip the null bytes off the end of the encrypted the cipher text. So let's write a quick check for the cipher text to split it out. So C text equals C text dot split. And we're just going to split it on binary string of a whole bunch of zeros because I assume there's going to be a bunch of them at the end. So we'll just do this. Again, we want to pick enough null bytes that they're not going to show up in the cipher text, right? We don't want to accidentally truncate the data too, too early. So I'll just pick like, I don't know, let's say eight of them or something. Again, it's just an arbitrary number. It's just enough null bytes to make sure that we are actually at the end. And of course, because we're doing a split, we'll take the first part of the split because that's where the actual data is. The last part of the split will be just all the rest of the null bytes. So now we have our cipher text. Next thing we want to do is want to decrypt that. So we want to create some plain text here. And the plain text is going to be that RC4 algorithm here. So RC4 crypt. And the first argument is the cipher text. And the next one is the key. All right. She. All right, this is like causing problems because I restarted the kernel so that we could make this input work. And I was just trying to be clever with this, but it's annoying to work with these workbooks. Again, I'm just doing it because I think it's the best way to share the code with you all annotated. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, you hear the dog? Dog's not happy. <laughs> See, he says, fuck you, Jupiter. All right, anyway, um, <laughs> what we'll do is we will actually just, do this, we'll get rid of this here. Run, all cells, there we go. All right, now it works. So something silly with the Jupyter Notebooks, if you guys know what it is that causes that to like basically, if you execute one cell and then the other and something messes up and then uh, it can't find the output from the previous cell. Again, I'm not too sure what it is, but we can just fix it by adding in that file path hard-coded here. And of course, when we write <laughs> so I had to close the office doors. The dog is having a little meltdown. Um, anyway, so uh, when we convert this over into a standalone file, we'll just have to remember to replace this hard-coded line. So hopefully uh, I don't forget that. All right, so now that we have the plain text, let's print the uh, plain text out here just to make sure it worked. All right, that looks like, I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but that looks like what we saw in the CyberChef uh, output here. Right? So we've successfully 
replicated the decryption and we've successfully pulled the config out of the file now and we have the configuration file. Now what we want to do is we want to work some magic on that plain text to try and get some information out of it. Now one thing that we can do is we can use this Unicode strings if we want and we can kind of just uh, cheat a little bit so we could do Unicode strings ptext and see what we get there. So you know, <laughs> you can see now why I wanted to do this in uh, Python instead of in CyberChef. It's a lot easier when you have your own custom code here. So when we extracted these strings out, we've extracted what looks like probably a C2. And I think this is like the install key um, for Warzone. But we're really only focused on the C2 right now. So it looks like that's what the C2 is. We could confirm this in a sandbox just to make sure. And what I want to do is I think this is kind of lazy. I want to take a look at that output again. So I'll print the uh, ptext. I actually have a hexify um, helper function, which I'll probably use here. Python 3 examples. I have to sort of switch my mindset from Python 2.7 to Python 3. I really hate Python 3's types. You know, I've been using Python 2.7 for like 10 years, you know, never had to worry about types, now I have to worry about them. So anyway, kind of annoying. I'll just grab this uh, two hex helper function here, uh, throw it in here. All right, we'll do two hex of the plain text. Okay, so this is a little bit easier to read for, for me at least. So I can see that the up until that one, well here, so these are the this hex encoded ASCII one, hex encoded ASCII six, hex encoded ASCII five, right? These are these bytes. They're separated by null bytes. So one thing I noticed is that, so this is hex 16. If you grab what appears to be this 165.22.5.66 address out of the binary here, it looks like it's 16 bytes long. So we could go and confirm this in IDA by looking at the structures in the code once they've decrypted the configuration file. But we don't even need to do that because we can just test it live, right? We have the data here. And the reason why I'm thinking that this might be the size is because because this is the same structural layout that they use for the actual encrypted configuration file. So why not use it for the decrypted one? So let's test that theory out and we'll see if the first D word, the first four bytes in the decrypted config is in fact the length of the C2 host or IP address. Um, so let's give that a shot here. Host length equals um, ptext. No, we'll do the struct unpack. So do that struct unpack first four bytes of the plain text file and that'll be the host length and then we'll do the host y equals plain text starting at four because that is the first four bytes for the length and then we're going to be and then the end of it is going to be the host length plus four to account for those four bytes. All right let's see if that works here and then we'll have to do Unicode strings of host wide. All right, that worked. So uh, we know that the first four bytes of the configuration file is the length of the C2 host. And then let's see what comes after it. Now this is kind of interesting. Let's pop back to our CyberChef view here. So the end of the host is right here. So 16 would be, that's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here we have something that looks like it's not Unicode right? This is something else. And then we have a whole bunch of null bytes. So I didn't actually look at the binary when I was first reversing this to figure out what these two bytes were. It was actually just something I picked up from looking at a lot of like binary configs. So port 443 is BB01 in hex in, in little endian. Um, I can actually, it's easier to just show you here. So you can do something like this, something like that. And you grab the first byte of it. So it's 443. So anytime I see something like BB01 in a config, I just automatically assume that it's gonna be a TCP port. And that's actually what it is in this case. Now, in this example that I have, it's actually, I think it's like uh, 5704. Let's see, 5704 is 11111. Yeah, so 1111. So in this case, I don't know that pattern off by heart. So I would have had to actually look at the binary and go through quite a bit more reverse engineering because there's a lot more structs. But I wanted to just show you guys this because 
a lot of times those tricks are probably going to be more helpful than just showing you the same thing over and over again. I mean, I've already showed you in a couple different videos how to mark up an IDB and like build the structs out of it. So there isn't much use in just going over that again. I thought I'd just share this, this method, which is actually a little bit faster. And once you look at enough binary representations of configs, you're going to kind of see it too. It's like you see the matrix, you know, you see that BB01, you know, that's 443. Anyway, so I just thought I'd explain that tip because that's how I actually did it originally. And it's more helpful, I guess, than just showing you another video where we go through looking at the structs, which is like kind of helpful, I guess, but once you do it once or twice, you know, it's kind of the same, same thing over and over again. All right, so anyway, the way that this works is the word after, so the two bytes after the host is actually the C2 port. Now we know how long the host is. We can now find the C2 host equals, all right, and then C2 port equals grab the plain text and we will start at the end of the host and we will go this plus two bytes okay and we want to use our decoding trick here copy that out All right so our c2 port so now let's print out our host c2 host all right so our host is 165.292.566 and the port is 1111. So now this code right here can statically extract the configuration from any Warzone file. There you go, config extract it. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. So here's where our tutorial is gonna stop. I'll upload this file to our GitHub and I'll link it below so you guys can grab it. If you want, as an exercise for yourselves, you can take the marked up IDB with that IDC script that I link and this file, and you can try and determine what the other values are in the configuration file. Now, it might be a little bit hard because like I said, there are, is a lot of structures that you need to go through and identify. I've identified a lot of them already in the binary, so it's not too difficult, but it is still a good solid couple hours of work to figure out what those other values are. Um, hint, one of them is like a key, one of them is like an install name, one of them is like the binary that it installs as like for the run key. So, you know, you can figure out what those are, um, go through the binary and analyze that yourself. But for now, uh, where we leave it, we actually have a static config extractor where we can rip out the host name and port without actually having to run the file. So that's the end of our analysis. And I think I might do one more video on this where we talk a little bit about automating this to build a sort of poor man's threat intelligence feed, uh, which I think is kind of cool. That's sort of more in the realm of what I actually do for my career. So it's kind of more interesting to me, but I know that a lot of you guys who are watching this are more interested in the reverse engineering side of it rather than that. So I'll just probably do like maybe one tutorial on that or something and uh, just to show you how it works. And then after that, I have a few more videos, kind of cool stuff that I've been working on and a few big announcements, but I have to hold off. A lot of you guys have been asking for this sort of stuff that we've been working on behind the scenes and uh, it's gonna be ready pretty soon. So with that, I hope you learned something. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and until next time, keep exposing mechanics behind the malware. Stay curious. Yeah, you know you fucking feel me. Yeah, you know you fucking feel me. Yeah, you know you fucking feel me. Right.